Chapter 9, Individual Exercise, Cutting, Route 63 Cross Sections, and Annotation. Okay, where we left off was the Route uh, Road 1 Earthwork, so that's the file I'm in. That's the last video I worked on, so now we're going to move into the, the, the exercise for the Route 63 Cross Sections and the Individual Exercise part of it. Uh, step 1 has us uh, creating a brand new file for our cross sections for Route 63. We created a new one for Road 1, now we're going to create one for Route 63, so simply File New. We'll use No Wizard. And first thing I'm going to look at is the folder that I'm working in, which is in zero, uh, Data 09. I'm in Data 09. I'm going to leave that alone. That's where I want to work. But I will go down and change my source file. It's targeting a, a file, but I want to go out to the project-wise and get the latest and greatest file from there. To do so, you just go up to the folder pull-down, Navigate to CAD standards and go to your seed files, design English, and then scroll down about two thirds of the way down. You'll see a iProject 2D Power Geopack.dgn. So we'll open that file. It will want to open read only. Yes, that's perfectly fine. And we will rename this file. So we're going to call this one XS, and this is step number one XS underscore J2. P0200 underscore route 63. Okay, so once we've got the name, we'll copy all this information down to the file name. So copy and a paste. So now we can create a blank file to do our cross sections for route 63. It's going to go out, it's going to check in this file. We'll go ahead and check in the file we were working in. And we will open up the brand new blank DGN file with all the SS4 settings. Okay, once we get the file opened up, we need to reference in some uh, some files. So what we're going to do is in step number uh, four, we're going to open up the reference dialog, which is up here near the top of the banner. And then we're going to do a, a tools attach. And then when we do this, we want to make sure we're in that folder that has our files in it. And that is the data nine folder. So I'm in a good spot. This is where I want to pull in front. And in step six, it says we want the silo geometry because we have to have a horizontal vertical. We want the corridor as well. So we get our template drops. We want pattern lines if we did any any work in pattern lines, in which we did, so we're going to use this file. Uh, you also want the land boundary file. Um, we have right away we want to show in our cross section, so we're going to bring that across. And then the last one will be our terrain existing. We want to make sure we have our terrain. So we'll add those to the list and then hit OK. And then OK through the next five dialogues. Okay, now we'll close this out and we'll do a fit view. Now, we didn't attach the super elevation file because you really don't need it when you're doing your cross sections. The corridor has already been supered and that was done in the corridors file. Since we're referencing the corridors file, you will see the supers already in effect. Okay. Okay, the area we're going to work on is this Route 63 area and you can see there are pattern lines file that's been referenced in. Let me select that one. We did some work in there, and you can see there's a couple of different little pattern lines out here that's that's in there. So you can actually do these in the file itself. So if you wanted to create some pattern lines in the cross section file, that's perfectly fine. Um, but I did them in the pattern lines file, and I'll close this out. And they're there, and I can use them for cutting cross sections. Okay. So we need to go over the tasks, and we're going to go on our civil civil tools, and we're looking for the corridor modeling tools. And again, we're looking for the cross-section tools, which is down near the bottom. There's three of them that we'll work on in the next couple chapters here. Uh, create cross-sections, the one-on-one. When you select it, the heads-up prompt comes up and says, uh, locate the alignment. I want to do the 63, so I'll just simply click on that 63. And when you hover over it, you'll see you've got your complex element, Route 63. It has an active profile of Route 63 PR, which we need. So we'll go ahead and accept that. Left-click on it. And that's step number 12. And we'll wait for the tool to open. 
Sometimes this takes a few seconds. It's loading a lot of stuff in the background. Sometimes it takes longer than I thought. There it is. Okay, so it's finally up. We'll go ahead and take this tool in and, and first thing that we do when we open our cross section, our annotation, our end area volume tools is we, we click on a preference button and we select the preferences that we're going to use. And in this the exercise it calls for in step 14 it calls for us to use the sheet 10 scale. So I'm going to pick the sheet 10, load. You'll see it loaded down here at the bottom. Sheet 10 scale loaded and I'll close out of that dialog. I'm finished. Okay. In step number 17, we need to set up some settings. In the general tab, you'll see it goes from 950 to 70 plus 79. With a minus 40, 140 and a positive 140 for left and right offsets. And our interval is 50. We don't do a vertical exaggeration. And it gives us a model name, which is taken from the route that we used, that we selected. So we're going to, all that looks good. Now, the next thing we want to do is go to the custom tab. And this is where we usually fill out most of our cross sections. So in the in this area, what we want to do is add a station range. Well, before we do that, step 18, it's asking us to select the elements in a geopack pattern line 2, which would be the, the pattern lines crossing road uh, route 63. So we can simply go out. I see there's four of them. Hit the element selection tool, uh, use the add button, and just add these four items, which we have perpendicular and we have a couple of lin uh, broken lines, linear elements. And then we have one that looks like it's just straight across. So uh, actually we have a skewed and we have a perpendicular. So once we have these selected, the best way to get them into the, the, the list over here is to start out at a station range. And then once you select them all, change that to line string. And when you do, you'll see this graphics button down at the bottom of the dialog highlight. Click that graphics, and you're going to see you're going to get your skewed, your two line strings, and a, another skewed one at the bottom. Okay, so we got our four string, our four um, pattern lines out there. Now, what we want to do is on step number 18 as well is add a station range of cross sections. So we'll change our toggle over here from line string to station range, and we're going to start our stations at 10 plus zero zero, and we're going to go all the way to 60 plus. Zero, 0 The interval that we're going to use is 50. The left and right offsets, we want to match our sheets. <clears throat> and that brings me to another point. If 140, like we're going to use minus 140 here, is not large enough, it won't plot your cross section. So what you'd have to do is change your, your preferences over to the 20 scale one. Okay, so once that's in there, we've got it added. Our left and rights match the first tab, which is the 140 left and right offset from, given to us from the preferences, which means that will fit perfectly in the sheet. If anything's beyond that, it will not plot, and you need to either figure something else out to do, but normally it just, you go to the 20 scale sheet. Okay, so once you have this filled out like I do here, you just hit the add button, and it places it in that list. Okay, so that was all of step number 18, just filling out the, the list in the custom. Next thing we want to do is go down to the controls option. In the controls, um, again, you have plan display. So if you want to see the cross sections that we created, you could toggle this on. And in your plan file, you will see gray lines shooting across wherever there's a cross section dropped and blue text identifying what stations those are. So if you wanted to see where your cross sections ended up in your plan sheet. Um, the thing that we're worried about on this part is our critical sections. We want to go to critical sections and turn off our horizontal and vertical cardinal points. And the reason we're doing that is we want even stationing. And this will drop. Um, it'll create cross sections wherever there's any kind of critical points or critical stations. So anything that's out there, you know, PI, uh, PT, your verticals, any of it will be picked up if those two buttons are turned on. So we're going to turn them off and just get even stations so we see what we, what we plotted. Okay. Okay, that was step 19 and step 20. We open the the sheet leaf. And the only thing you really want to mess with in here is the annotation part. And in the annotation, 
again we have these tag names and values that we have to change again we have tag names in this tool that will go out to our border file and there's tags in the border file it sees the tag while we have a tag name route it looks for a tag in that file that's called route and then we give it a value and it places a value in a data field in that sheet so you'll show you I'll show you how this works here in a little bit so first thing we want to do is populate the the list we have a route we're gonna call this route 63 so we'll just say R E R R T E 63 and then we'll update that field so now our value is gonna place a route 63 wherever it sees this tag of route our district is northeast so we'll do it N E again you update click on county the county is Randolph and we use caps for this so and all our sheets so use caps update job number is J2P 0200 so we'll update that as well and then it says leave the contract ID blank project number blank and a bridge number blank now if you have this information you want to populate it in there you can and what this is going to do on our sheet annotation it's going to go out and populate our title blocks in each sheet that gets processed out there okay so it's kind of a, an automated way of doing things info one we're going to call this cross section sheets so cross section sheets and then we'll update that Info 2, we're going to say uh, in the instructions, it says Route 63 construction. So let's just call it R. Let's just do it RTE 63 construction. I guess I'll give it a space. And I'll go ahead and spell out Route as it does in the book. So Route 63 construction, I updated, and that's good. So we're good there. And that fills out the title block the way we want. So all we did was come through and change these tag names and give it some values. Okay. Once we're finished with that part, all you need to do is simply hit the apply button. And it's going to go out and it's going to create cross-section sheets. Our cross-section model. And in that cross-section model, you will have the number of sheets that it takes to process that 10 plus 00 to 60 plus 00. Not only that, you'll get all. Okay, so our, our sheets have processed. It's taking a few minutes, and I'll go back and clip out that so it'll just look like I clicked the button, and there they are. you got to understand, it takes a little bit of time to go out, grab those sheets, bring them in. It takes time to process. Another thing I wanted to touch on before I go looking at the sheets is you can save this uh, information that you created in here to tag name and values just by simply hitting the save button it will create a DAT file that you can keep in your data folder so the next time you you uh, you open this up and you want to run it you simply come down to this button at the bottom click that go out and find that that DAT file now if you cut them again and it defaults back to your data folder and you want to go to the MoDOT default one that MoDOT default one is on the T drive MoDOT workspace uh, modeling cross sections MoDOT DAT file Okay, so that's where it's located. The other thing is back up under the custom, I touched on it in the road one, but you can actually save this list again. You can save out, save as, and save that list to your uh, data folder as well so that later on when this list gets quite lengthy, you would just simply come down and use the import button to bring it in. Okay, so I'm pretty much done with this, uh, this tool here. I'm going to go ahead and close out of it and look at our cross sections. And again, it's asking me because I save changes, but uh, because because I made changes, but I'm not going to save them because I have access to the T drive. So I'll just say no, and no, I don't want to save that either. So I'll just let them go. First thing I always like to do is turn off my minor grid lines and make sure my used levels are being taken advantage of. And open this up so I can see my minor grid lines. Turn them off. And in this case, I can probably turn off my majors as well and just kind of see my cross sections. Okay, so I can zoom in and you can see we've got a proposed geometry out there and you've got your existing ground. And over to the right, you can see we also have our supers that's been applied. Even though we didn't bring the file in with us, we, we actually have it. Uh, on this case, it looks like you'd really want to run some 20 scale sheets or get a little bit more because we're outside. And if we do earthwork, it will give it to us. But um, 
our graphics are going to be kind of goofy. So let's zoom into the title block, see what we got. We filled out the title block area. You can see our routes there, our northeast is there, our six, our Randolph, our J2P0200. We do have the data fields turned on so you can see the little dashes. Easy remedy to that is to come to View Attributes, click the button. Wait. Data fields are in the bottom left here. Toggle them off. Now you lost your dashes. So that's a good thing. You can also see the sheet number has been placed in there. So it automatically goes with sheet number. And then we'll look at the uh, data one and two that we filled out. Cross section sheets in that first field. Route 63 construction in that second field. And sheet six of. Now it's missing the number over here. And I got to go back and find out why it's missing that. We did an update. And I'm not sure if that tag works the way it did before so I'll have to go back and make sure that's working but other than that it looks like our cross, -sex cross sections came in well I can still see one issue with our cross section it don't look like our it's been updated yet but we should have flat bottom ditch here and we actually got it supering with our points so I'll have to go back out to the template and make sure that that's been fixed and I can tell right now it hasn't but I'll have to go out and update the one that I'm picking up from and whatever server I'm on right now so once that's done, I can also use the, uh, under the cross-section tools, the cross-section viewer to kind of navigate through my cross-sections if it seems kind of daunting. I usually like to use my middle mouse button to zoom in and out, but in this case I'm going to go out and use the cross-section viewer, and I don't know why things are so slow today. Okay, so once it's up, and it, the important thing about this is that you're looking in the correct model. We only have one option here, but uh, Route 63, if you ran more cross-sections, you get more um, models to choose from, and always choose the one that matches your banner. Uh, so it says Route 63. I got Route 63. Now it's as simple as uh, all you have to do now is just click on the station. I want to see 12 plus 0, 0. I click on it. It brings it right into my view. 12 plus 0, 0. Got my cross-sections. Scroll down. Pick 34 plus 0, 0. There it is. Okay, so that's how the cross-section viewer works. Okay, so then I'll close that out. And what I'm going to do now is go right into the, I'll zoom in to 16 plus 50. I don't know why I'm just picking one. <clears throat> but now we'll go right into the annotation part of this. And it's a simple tool to work as well. We go to our tasks. And we go down to our annotate cross-section tool, which is the cross-sections with the capital A on it. And when we open that up, which seems like it's going to take a little bit, we're going to first thing that we do in these tools is hit our preferences. And we're going to load a MoDOT offset elevation slope. We're going to load that one. There's not more than one preference in here because this tool works with our, um, if I can find it now, uh, drawing scale. I don't know why it wasn't up. But now our annotation scale is picked up. It's set at 10, so the tool uses that 10 annotation scale and places them out there. The model's important again. Right now we only have one to choose from, but you want to make sure that matches the banner, or else you will label the wrong model. The surface we're going to do here, we've got a couple different options. The 200 is the existing ground, which we could do if we wanted to get some labels on our existing ground. Um, you have road 1, but we're going to do 63 this time. So we'll pick 63. And we will move down to step number uh, 37. So 37 says expand the folders feature, uh, expand the features folder, and select annotate on the left hand side. So when we do that, the features contain our elevation and offsets okay so if we go to annotate we've got a lot of different options these are points that we can label our elevation and offset um, in step number 38 it says pick a few uh, select a few of the cross-section features using the pick button to show elevation offset so the way you do it is instead of knowing what you need to pick here you just simply come to this pick button pick it go out to a, a point that you want to label I'll pick right here at the edge of pavement and shoulder <clears throat> that is the Route 63 left concrete edge of pavement. I want to do the other one, so I'll click it again and go to the other side. And maybe I want that center line 
you know, right, right at the crown, if I can get to it, and it found it. Okay, so those are a couple points. Maybe there's a couple more I want to pick here. Go out to the end edge of the shoulder, pick it. And you can see it's populating this li list. I need that right edge of the shoulder, so I'll go pick it over here. If you know the point, you can pick it from the list, or you can go out and pick it. Okay, so once that's filled out, let's see what it says in 39. Annotate cross-section dialog. Click apply to annotate the cross-section. Okay, so that's all we really need to do uh, to to create this. Uh, segments you shouldn't have to worry about because this is covered with the defaults. Um, we got a slope which is a format of 50% or percentage, an alternate slope of a rise and run, and this down here use alternate slope if slope exceeds 10% allows it to kick into the rise and run. So that's good. We're all good on this. So just like the instructions say, we'll just go out and hit the apply button. And we will label our file. If I zoom out a little bit, you can see our elevation offsets are there. We also have our uh, percentage ones, our rise to runs. And I see I have a 0 0.00 percent and I'll fix that here in a second and that pretty much uh, sums up labeling uh, the tool is just simple quick and easy and, and sometimes it's just as easy to go out and annotate and hit them all and see what you get and then take some away but these uh, these labels are not um, linked by any means so they're they're the same with the cross section. Cross sections are not linked back to the model, so it takes a snapshot of that model. So if the model changes, everything else has to change. We've got to create new cross sections to bring in new labels. And later on, your job may get really um, congested with labels. So you might you you'll want to come in and move them, change your leader lines and stuff like that. So I would wait till the end of the project before I label anything, unless you just need generic labels on there to see what's going on. You can always get rid of them by using the F4 key changing the uh, element selection to a levels option and then turn you know, click in the, the notes that they come on which is the cross-section text elevation miscellaneous notes and offset label and slope those would all be selected and then you can delete them and all the notes would go away uh, the one thing I'm going to change though is I'm going to change the 0 plus 0 0 or yeah, 0 0.00 I'm going to go out and do a find replace text using microstations edit tool and when I do, it brings up the dialog. Move that out of the way. And I'm going to find 0.00% and replace it with nothing. And then I could just hit a replace all. It'll go out, search the file, and then come back with a number of how many times it had to do it. I believe. Just takes time. What a day to do videos. It's slower than I'll get out. <laughs> no, it's not. There it goes. 186. 100, 186 of them. So, okay. And they're gone. Now you don't have 0 plus 0 .00. Um, the other thing it says in step number 41, just to show you, and I'll close this annotate cross section box, is to change the uh, scale, annotation scale to 20, and just see what it does. They're set at 10 right now because that's what we created it as, but it is annotation aware. And so when you do this, eventually it will change the scale to 20. Yes, it will. And there it is. It doesn't look so good, does it? <laughs> so we'll leave it at 10 which will take another couple minutes to do, but I'm done with the annotations and the uh, cross-section part of it, so um, I'll go ahead and create a video for the next thing. This video for our section chapter 7, chapter 9, cross-sections and annotation for Route 63 is complete.